The topic of this video is reducing bias in language. When writing for the social science, we put a very high priority on precision. We describe our research with great precision and clarity and in a manner that is free from bias. We treat all people in our writing with dignity. The APA publication manual has a separate section on reducing bias in language. You'll need to read that section very carefully and learn the various rules about how to reduce bias in language. I'll introduce uh, those rules to you and give you some examples about how to correct bias language in this video. The APA publication manual describes three separate rules for reducing bias. First, describe at the appropriate level of specificity. This refers to when you're describing groups of people, such as participants in an experiment or participants in a survey, Describe them at appropriate level of specificity. The second is be sens sensitive to the labels that you're placing on people. And the third is to acknowledge participation, keeping in mind that people who participate in our research are not passive recipients of research. They are active participants in research, and it's in all of our interest to thankfully acknowledge their participation. The publication manual also advocates requires that we reduce bias by topic, that uh, we do not describe <clears throat> our, uh, people in biased ways with respect to gender, sexual orientation, racial and ethnic identity, disabilities, age, or historical and interpretive inaccuracies. So uh, you'll need to read the publication manual, the section of the publication manual in detail uh, for, for more thorough explanations of these topics, but let me run you through a few examples of biased language, of the rules that are violated by the biased language, and how the sentences can be uh, corrected to reduce biased language. And this is a good prelude to the assignment that you'll have for uh, rewriting biased sentences. So, let's go to the first example. So here's a broken sentence. 500 children participated in this study. What's the problem with the sentence? Well, the problem is it violates APA's Rule 1 concerning bias language described at an appropriate level of specificity. 500 children is a very general term. It really doesn't tell us much about the participants, so I have fixed the sentence to provide a, a greater level, a more acceptable le level of specificity. 512 year old female healthy children with mixed ethnic backgrounds participated in this study. You can see the difference between the two sentences with respect to level of specificity and why the second version, the fixed version, is more appropriate than the first or the broken version. So that's an example of rule one concerning bias language. Let's move on to a rule two issue. So here's a broken sentence. Too often the needs of the disabled are ignored. Well, what's wrong with this sentence? People who are disabled don't consider themselves, don't call themselves disabled. They are, they are persons who happen to have disabilities. They are persons first and they have disabilities. So how might we fix this sentence? Given an example here, too often the needs of persons with disabilities are ignored. But we don't label people on the basis of their conditions or afflictions. We don't call people the disabled or the arthritics or the rheumatics. We call them persons with whatever conditions they have. So that's an example of rule two. Let's move on to rule three. Rule three concerns acknowledging participation. So here's the broken sentence. Each experimenter conducted the study on 150 participants. The problem with this sentence is that it puts the participants in a very passive role, as if they're objects. Something happened to them. But in fact, they are people who usually volunteered or might be paid, uh, and all, in any cases volunteered to participate in research without co coercion, and it's important to acknowledge their participation in the research. So we can fix this rather simply uh, as follows. 150 participants took part in this study. So that's an example of um, <clears throat> taking a, a 
passively constructed uh, uh, sentence, a passive voice sentence with respect to the participants and putting the participants um, in an active role in the sentence. Okay, let's uh, look at an example of reducing bias by topic, in this case, gender. So the broken sentence is corporate managers and their wives divorced at higher rates than did non-managers and their wives. But what's wrong with this sentence? Well, there's an assumption in this sentence that the managers and the non-managers are men because we're talking about their wives. So how, I, how might we fix this? We simply take out the gendered word wives and put in a non-gendered word spouses. So the fixed sentence would read, corporate managers and their spouses divorced at higher rates than did non-managers and their spouses. So let's look at the assignment that you're going to have due. This is the biased language assignment. Uh, it, uh, the instructions show you where in the publication manual uh, to find the descriptions of biased language and the explanations and, and the recommendations for how to fix it. We give an example of a, of a, a, a broken sentence again, and then if, uh, that's the original, a fixed sentence, that's the revised sentence, and then an explanation. And that's basically what we want you to do. We are giving you some broken sentences six of them, and we want you to revise the sentence so that it has non-biased language and to provide an explanation of why, why you fixed it, what was wrong with the sentence, and why you fixed it the way you did. So remember, in our social science writing, precision is extremely important. When describing persons, choose words that are accurate, clear, and free from bias.